Okay, hello. Uh, we're from Moi Wing Chun Wu Shu again. Um, we mentioned in another video a bit about the sticky hands and, and what that's, or how we see it. And I just sort of slightly mentioned it a bit in context to how the punch works and how this force comes, deflect, force goes, you follow it. And uh, if the forces just vanish, you just go in and rush in and attack. So uh, the way we see the chi cell, sticky hands, is in term or it's important in terms of how you apply Wing Chun. So there's there if you read Wing Chun forums, which I've sort of started to do since I started the class, for years, for nearly twenty years I never bothered worrying worrying about what anybody did with their Wing Chun. I just learned what I learned. But uh, just recently since I started the class I got kind of curious to see what else was out there and to my surprise it's like so much of it's so different to what we do and there seems to be some confusion about uh, what sticky hands is to the extent that do you even use it in a in a fight you know if you had to have a, well firstly with a fight our, our idea is we don't have a fight if he attacks I'm not gonna all right I've got that and I'll try and figure him out and, uh, that's probably what you're gonna do in a ring I guess he attacks. I want to be on him. And if that doesn't knock him out, if whatever comes next, I want to have him after that. And uh, the way my seafood put it was, it was like a game of chess. If I get into here, he either gets hit or he stops it there. He stops it there. I already know where I'm going. He, if he's good, probably does too but I should be a couple of steps ahead. If he wants to avoid that, then I'm ahead of him. Always, you want to always be at least one step ahead. So the way we apply this stuff, we don't want to be ever bridging and then figuring it out. Because you do that against the likes of him, he's got you before you know what's happened. And, uh, you find anyone who's done proper traditional martial arts properly, the traditional way, you will see that uh, there's very little of this sort of uh, feeling each other out. You know, that's more, from what I get the impression, it's more a sporting thing. Uh, one of our friends uh, does uh, Kenjutsu from Japan, the oldest Kenjutsu school in Japan, he learns that. And you watch, I've watched videos of them. And if you pretend this is a sword and he's coming with a sword, they're in straight away. There's no chop and chop and you know any of this stuff. It's just he moves, boom, done. And you know we want to have the same sort of idea with our winching. And that's where Chum Q comes in and what bridging the gap's about for us. Bridging the gap isn't getting some sort of contact and then trying to figure out how I'm going to get in after that. Bridging the gap for us is closing the range. Let me stick your foot where it was. Getting contact, ideally, in at least three places. On a leg, on an arm, and striking him somewhere in the target to eat him. From there, I might come in and do all sorts of other stuff. But for us, bridging isn't about sticking an arm out and then struggling to get in because he's going to be a step ahead if I have that mindset from our point of view. So I want to ideally be hitting him when he'd think he'd be hitting me. And in fact, if I can have him done without even having to touch him and knock him clean out, which if you've punched properly will, uh, all the better. In fact, my Seagull, uh, said my Sifu's told us my Sigun would often say that if you can punch someone harder and faster than they can punch you, that's all you'll ever need. And given that he got up to the, his 70s and never lost a fight, and he had lots of them, uh, I'd say that's some pretty good advice from someone who knows. But anyway, the chi cell is about what happens when you've gotten your contact from our point of view. We practice it with this, uh, this stuff here. It starts off with the Dajisa, which is pretty common. We then get into 
how you what people call rolling hands, I guess. Then we get into some drills where you practice various stuff. And then you can advance it into sort of sparring where you practice fighting, sort of whatever. But uh, people see that sort of stuff and think, and I used to think this when I first learned it, but what if you fight someone who doesn't do Wing Chun? Because you, they're not going to come in and be here, so how the hell do you, you know, it's, you don't use it. Of course you use it, otherwise it wouldn't be there. It's just not in that context. And it's much, much, much more simple and direct in terms of application. And it all comes back to that old saying, force comes, deflect, goes, follow. And uh, if the force is just gone, rush in and attack. So, going back to what I was saying earlier, if he's attacking, and I've come into something like this, my chi cell is right here. There's nothing opposing my forward's force here. His force is, well, I can tell you from feeling it, if uh, that comes in hard, his force is gone the minute that strikes. Because it hurts like arm breakage hurting if you haven't trained your arms. My next step is to follow the line of least resistance for my forward's force, which is straight in there. If, however, he's good, he's trained his arms, they're tough, he might want to feel that if he's got some sensitivity, in which case my chi cell then goes from the, if there's no opposing force rush in an attack, to deflect and then let his arm past and then follow the next most easy line in. So when you're actually doing it, if you have to use this stuff for self-defense, chi cell is as simple as that. done. That's your chi cell. You've got in contact, there's no opposing force to yours, you're straight in. If however he does, I'm going to change it. If he blocks that, now I'm shut down from here, I'm not shut down here. But I don't just want to let that go, because he does chi cell, he's going to feel my force is gone and get me. So what do I do? I change it. I use something like my Jun Ma, I use my Lap Cell, because I've trained at it, and I change the angles. If he's big, he's a bit smaller than me, his stance is very good, and I can still just pull him around a bit, but not often, he doesn't let me do it. So then I've got to change my Chi Sao again. If he's much bigger and stronger than me, so let's pretend you're much more powerful, I can't move you, maybe then I move by utilising my footwork. So that is how we see sticky hands. We don't just see it as an exercise for finding... I don't know what people mean when they say, you know, control your centre. I don't... That doesn't make any... It doesn't mean anything to us. We don't know what that means. But I want to keep my... Uh, like going back to the punches. I don't want to give someone something here because he's going to take it. I don't want to give him something here because he's going to take it. If he tries to take me, I just want to be nice and solid in my stance, relaxed through my arms. So then I'm going to change and come in on a different angle or whatever. But when it comes, I forgot the point I was at. I do this all the time. I go off on a tangent and forget the main point. So, yeah, the purpose of Chi Sao is basically to feel what's happening because you can feel it usually quicker than you can see this sort of stuff. And if you train it into a reflex reaction, the, uh, the example Sifu would always use with us is if you put your hand on a stove, you don't have to have your hand on the hot stove think, oh, I better pull my hand off. Your reflex reaction does it for you. you know? So for those of you who have studied uh, physiology and this stuff, you know, the reflex reaction bypasses conscious thought and so on. The idea of this kind of stuff here and the sparring involved is to train these reactions into the reflexes, not uh, conscious sort of stuff. You do need to have conscious thought when you're learning it, but eventually it all happens without you having to think about it and very relaxed and so on. So anything else we might say about Chi Sao? Uh, about... Uh, Punches. What were you saying? Chain punching. Yeah. Punching. No, I don't even call it chain punching. I really, really cringe when I hear the word chain punches. Uh, for us, they're not something we 
generally do. So what we want with our chi sao is if he comes in and punches, that's uh, probably that one. Though. I get my contact here. Let's say he stops that. So you're not a boxer, you're a Wing Chun guy. Let's say. Now I want to. I still want to try and flood him and shut him down and smother what he's doing. And in order to do that, I don't want to do this sort of thing. Throw away contact and, and potential control of his arms. Uh, if I come in and block that, and I just start this sort of stuff, I've thrown away whatever possibility I have of shutting down and smothering him. So, what our what our uh, single center line punches are for is all developmental. We practice these punches quite a bit in class, especially during the aerobic exercise part of it. That's developmental as well. What we want is something to that effect. You train your pucks here, back here, in a very uh, abstract way, like so. When you apply it, it's much, much more immediate. And it follows all the principles of uh, how you're going to use your chi cell. Force comes, I deflect. No force back here to stop me. I just want to get in and hit him as soon as I can. Hopefully shutting down what, he, what he's going to do. I shouldn't need to say it, but I will. Uh, all of that is immensely more easily said than done, particularly if someone's well trained because they're fighting to do to uh, shut you down. And uh, that's where good training and good foundations all come into play. So yeah, I guess that's probably all we could say about how, how and why we do chi sao the way we do. Um, yeah, the way we do chi sao, if you watched our, the other videos we put up, we actually attack and do a lot of sparring. And some people say that the idea of chi sao is not to try and score hits on the other person. But uh, yeah, it is <laughs> actually. There's a lot to it, you know, there's the sensitivity, you feel what's happening, there's the training of your forwards force. I don't want to be doing chi cell like this, because if I do this, force comes, deflects, force goes, by, force is gone, he hits me. I want to keep my forwards force opposing his. I want to get away from his forwards force and send it that way so I can punch him. I want his center line over there. So mine's on him. I either want to do that by him overextending himself or me using my footwork to position myself better in light of what he's doing to me or trying to do. So, uh, you know, you have these elements to it, this sensitivity. It trains your sensitivity. It trains you to relax. It trains you to be soft. One of the things we really don't want to do for us, although lots of people do it, if they do, that's great for us. We don't like this stuff because I do that. <laughs> he's he's quick. He's going to get me. Uh, especially if he uses his footwork, he'll be back behind me before I know what's happened. Um, so we train structure. We train to have our structure from saw and tail in our cheek cell. That's why if you do cheek cell without good saw and tail, you'll have bad cheek cell. We train our forwards force, which should be, from our point of view, very soft, but there. The softer the better. If you can, if you want to think of it as hear something very softly here, if he yells, so to speak, really pow powerful, it's like I can hear, if you can hear a pin drop, you'll hear someone shout, you'll, you'll have to hear it, let's say. So I can, you know, I can feel that if he just moves a little. I can feel what he, what he does and deal with it. If he really comes at me, I know what he's going to do, usually before he does it. But if he's very tense, I'll be around him and my contact will be gone and he won't even know it's gone. And uh, if you train at Chi Cell like we do, you may have uh, felt, if you're a beginner, when you're still, because you will be kind of tense and stiff as a beginner takes time to learn it. As a beginner, you'll train with someone much more experienced. They'll be so soft, you'll barely be able to feel their arms. And they'll hit you more times than you know what's happened before it's, before you realize you've been hit. 
Um, so we train all of that as well. You train your sensitivity, your reactions, and all this sort of stuff. You train your forwards force. I should do my stance, it's lazy. You train all of that. But eventually, you've got to actually put that into practice. You've got to... You're right. I got you. Sorry. It's right. you, you've actually got to put it into practice. Otherwise, when the day comes, someone attacks you. You're not going to be able to do that. You're just going to go... And try to feel what's happening. And, uh, yeah, that's going to put you in some trouble if you've got someone who's really powerful and aggressive. They don't even have to be trained well. So that's G-South for us. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's about all for G-South. Oh.